In this video, we'll be making a system for character stats. We'll make it easy to define stuff like health, armor, and damage, and to have our equipment modify our stats. We'll also implement a method for taking damage that take these stats into consideration. Also, if you didn't know, Sebastian did the previous video in this series, so you can go to his channel to check that out. Let's get into it. So as we can see, Sebastian has set up some of the graphics for equipment. We now start with some default wear. And if we pick up some of the items here on the ground, they will now appear in our inventory with the correct sprite and we can then equip them onto our character. But currently the items have no effect on gameplay. If we look under the items folder, we can go under objects and here we have all of the scriptable objects for our armor. We can see that each one has a armor and a damage modifier. And the same thing for our default wear. I'm actually going to select all of our default wear and set both of those to zero. But we're currently not using these modifiers in any way. To do that, let's go under our scripts folder. Let's right click, go create folder, and let's create one for all of our stats. In here, we'll create a script called character stats. This will be responsible for keeping track of all of the stats on all characters in the game. And we'll make it in such a way that we can derive from it in order to create custom logic for our player and our enemies. We'll also create another c -sharp script, and this is just going to be called stat. This will be a fairly simple object representing a single stat such as armor or damage. I also just noticed that I want to go out of debug mode in my inspector here. Let's begin by opening up our stat script. Let's delete our two methods and we don't want to derive from mono behavior. Instead, we want to go ahead and mark this class as system.serializable. Remember, we do this whenever we want Unity to serialize a custom class, which means that the fields inside of this class will show up in the inspector. We'll then create a public integer called base value. As the name suggests, this will be the starting value for the given stat. We do want this to show in the inspector, but there's actually no reason for this to be public because we don't want to be able to access this directly. This should only be set inside of the inspector. And then when we want to get the value for our stat, we want to do that using a method so that we make sure to always apply modifiers before returning the value. So we'll create a simple method called getValue that returns an int. To do that, we go public int getValue. And right now we don't have any modifiers, so we can simply return base value, but we'll add those in a sec. And now we don't need this to be public anymore, so we can mark this as private. And then in order to still make this editable in the inspector, we'll mark it as serialize field. If we now save this and go into our character stats, here let's remove the two namespaces at the top and the two methods. And now we can create a public stat called say damage. Let's also create one for armor. If we then save this, go into Unity, select our player and drag our character stats onto here, we can see that we now have these two stats under which we can edit the base value. Awesome. So each character now has a damage and armor value, but we also want each character to have some health amount. You could have this be a stat as well, but I actually don't want to be able to add modifiers to health. So I'll simply keep this as an integer. We'll call it max health. And we'll just default it to say 100. We'll also create a public int, which we'll call the current health. And we'll make this a property of type get and then private set. What this means is that any other class will be able to get this value, but we can only set this value from within this class. So if we now create an awake method, and in here we set current health equal to max health, that's totally fine. However, if we tried to do this from another class, it wouldn't let us. The next thing that we want all characters to be able to do is take damage. So we'll create a public void called take damage and this will take in a damage amount. The simplest way to apply damage to a character is by simply subtracting it from our current health. So we'll say current health minus equals damage. And we can maybe also print out a message saying what happened in the console. So we'll go debug.log, here we'll print out transform.name, then we'll say takes and then our damage amount of damage. Then we want to check if our current health has reached or gone below zero. If it has, we want the character to die. So we'll go if current health is less than or equal to zero, well then we want to call some kind of die method. And how the character dies is completely going to depend on what character we're talking about. We probably want enemies to either play a death animation or turn into physics ragdolls. We might also want them to drop loot or trigger a cutscene. But for the player, we probably want some kind of game over screen or some way to respawn. So the best way to do this is actually just make a public virtual void called die 
that we can then override for both the enemy and the player. So here we want to die in some way. This method is meant to be overridden. And then we can maybe just throw in a debug.log statement saying that transform.name died. But our damage calculation is currently super simple. Let's utilize the fact that we have an armor stat and use this to lessen the damage. In other words, we can simply take our damage and subtract our armor stat. Remember, to get the value of the stat, we go dot get value. Of course, we might get a case here where we have a larger amount of armor than incoming damage. And that means that we simply want nothing to happen. But right now, this would actually make our damage negative. And when subtracting with a negative number, the result is positive. Which means that if our armor value is currently greater than the damage, we would actually be healed. And we don't want that. To avoid that, we'll make sure to clamp our damage between 0 and int.max value. So now our damage should never go below zero. So now we have a structure in place for taking damage, but we currently don't have any combat. Let's go in here and add an update method. And we can add a quick test in here where we check if we press the T key, T for test. And if we do, well then we want to take some damage and we'll just set the damage amount here to say 10. Now if we save that, go into Unity and hit play, we'll also switch into debug mode. We can see that our current health is currently 100. If we then press the T key, it says player takes 10 damage and the current health is now reduced to 90. If we bump up the base value for our armor, let's just set it to 5 and then try and do the same thing. We can see that it says player takes 5 damage and now the health is only reduced to 85. So already our system is working, but our damage and armor values are still unaffected by equipment. To change that, let's get rid of our character stats and instead create a new c -sharp script called player stats. We can then derive player stats from character stats. And here we can use the fact that in our equipment manager, equipment manager dot instance, we put in a callback method for whenever a new item was equipped. We call this on equipment changed. We can now create our own method inside of this class and subscribe it to this callback. Let's call this method on equipment changed. And let's go ahead and create it down here. Void on equipment changed. And this is going to take in a piece of equipment, which is the new item and a piece of equipment called the old item, just as we defined it inside of the equipment manager. In order to apply these modifiers, let's go into our stat, and here we can create a list of all of the modifiers currently on this stat. Let's create a private list of integers, and we'll call it modifiers. And by default, we'll set it equal to a new list of integers. Then we can create a public void add modifier, which takes in an integer called modifier, here we want to check if the modifier is not equal to zero, in which case we want to add this to the modifiers list. We do that by calling modifiers.add and feeding in the modifier that we want to add. And we'll do the exact same thing for removing modifiers. Let's create a public void called remove modifier. This also takes in an integer called modifier. Here we also check if modifier is not equal to null, in which case we'll call modifiers dot remove and feed it the modifier passed in. If we save this now and go into our player stats, we can then go armor dot add modifier, new item dot armor modifier, and the same thing for damage, damage dot add modifier, new item dot damage modifier. And of course, we only want to do this if our new item is not equal to null. And we can do the exact same thing for our old item, but in reverse. So if old item is not equal to null, well, then we want to go armor dot remove modifier, old item dot armor modifier and damage dot remove modifier, old item dot damage modifier. So now every time an item gets equipped, this method gets called and we make sure to add and remove the appropriate modifiers. If we now save this, go into Unity, make sure that we're in debug mode in the inspector, select our player, drag in our new player stat script, we can give the damage here a base value of say 5, and just leave the armor at a base value of 0. We should then be able to hit play, see that we currently have no modifiers for the damage or armor. If we then pick up our equipment here, and we then start to equip it, let's equip the helmet first, we can see now that a modifier of 1 gets added to our damage, and a modifier of 2 gets added 
added to our armor. And it will keep on adding more modifiers as we equip more items. So now with all three items equipped, you can see the different modifiers that are now added to our armor and damage. And just to make sure this is working, we can see that our armor has a base value of zero, but it has two modifiers, one of plus two and one of plus three. So all our incoming damage should now be reduced by five. And so if we take 10 damage, we should only subtract five health. But if I press T, it still says player takes 10 damage. The reason for this is that inside of our stat, when getting the value, we are currently only returning the base value. In here, we need to create an integer called final value and we'll set this equal to base value. We'll then need to loop through all of the values in our modifiers list and add them to our final value. A quick way to do this is using modifiers dot for each. So for each element in our modifiers list and we'll call the given element x, we'll then want to add x onto the final value. So final value plus equals x. And then instead of returning the base value, we want to return final value. Let's save that, go into Unity, hit play. We'll make sure to equip all of our items. So again, we have an armor of five. And when I now press T, the player only takes five damage. And that should be it for our player stats. That's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a future one. Also, if you haven't checked out the Mayan Temple pack that we recently released on dev assets, I definitely recommend you do so. I would love to see an RPG with that theme. And in general, I would like to see more of what you're doing. So if you've been making a game using these tutorials or maybe one of the packs on dev assets, definitely tweet me some pictures at Bracky's tweet. I'm really excited to see what you guys are doing. On that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in August and a special thanks to Hans Hoftoon, Jesper Mikkelsen, Thomas Wally, Stone Gamer, Cyborg Mummy, Jason Latito, Derek Heemskirk, Faisal Marify, Husam Kaza, Judaman, Aaron, Robert Bund and Peter Locke. If your name's not on the list I will make sure to include it in videos later this month and the next month as well. You guys rock!